Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ella Pudidi and this is the secret life of my PhD. Today I want to spend some time looking at exam preparation or rather how to study for exams. Now, um, when I used to lecture, I'd have students uh, come to me and say, ma'am, I've studied for my test, you know, I spent all these hours studying and I thought I understood my work. And then I get to the test or the exam and, you know, the results that I get from that test or exam, it's completely different to what I expected. I'm not passing and I don't understand why. Now, one of the reasons why is that there's a difference between studying for the sake of studying, studying to know your work and studying to prepare for an exam. In university, we like to call it exam technique. Um, whether you think it's good or bad, I don't know, you feel like, uh, should you really be studying for an exam? Whether or not it's good or bad, at the end of the day, in order for you to get a degree, you get assessed in an exam. And if you're not able to pass the exam, no matter how good you are, or no matter how much you've read and you know the subject for as long as you cannot demonstrate that you know the work based on the exam, then you'll not be able to pass. And that's not what we want. So I want to spend some time in this video just looking at how do you study towards an exam? How do you prepare for an exam? So let's get into it. The first thing, it seems very abstract, it seems very, um, you know, touchy-feely, but it's very important. The first thing is watch your crowd. Watch the people you hang around with. If you hang around people who have a negative attitude towards school, that's not a very good idea. Stay away from them. Well, not stay away from them, but manage your interactions with them. If you hang around people who have an attitude towards the subject, you know, sometimes students will say, ah, the subject is so difficult, you know, those notorious subjects, you can't get a distinction in the subject, you know, you can just only hope for a 50 if you're lucky, you know, the lecturer just wants to fail people. If you hang around people who think like that, that can also influence your thinking later on. And when you're sitting alone and you're trying to study in the back of your mind, you're just like, oh, what's the point? You know, I won't even get like a 60. The most I can get is a 50. So it can affect you negatively. So be careful the crowd that you hang around with when you're preparing for exams, when you're writing tests. Just be careful of that. Number two, this is simple but very important. Know the basics. What time is the exam? How long is the exam? What is the scope? What is included in the exam? What type of questions are going to be asked in the exam? This is the information that you get from your lecturer. And you know what? The last thing you want is to arrive at an exam or a test an hour late or 30 minutes late or 15 minutes late, whatever it is, purely because you thought the exam was starting at 11, but the exam was actually starting at 10 or you got the wrong date. You know, you just don't want those kinds of stupid pro problems. So it's very important to just manage all of that, get all of your subjects, look at the times, note it down, whether you use your cell phone or you use a journal, whatever it is, make sure that you have everything recorded. Make sure you have the scope as in what is included in the exam because you don't want to spend time studying stuff that is not included. Yes, it's good to know, it's nice to know, but you need to manage your time and you need to focus on what is going to be in the exam. Number three, understand the verbs that are used in your subject or in your module. Now, what am I talking about when I say verbs? In, in, in the required section of the exams, when they, they write the question, they'll, they'll say things like analyze the scenario or discuss the factors or critically evaluate. So you, you've heard of them, but describe, critique, review, tabulate, calculate. There's a long list of verbs that lecturers can use to ask their questions. You need to make sure you understand what those verbs mean for that particular subject. So you're not going to Google and see, okay, what does Google say? No, no. You want to know when in accounting 101, when they say analyze, what do they mean? In business management, when they say analyze, what do they mean? In law, when they say analyze, what do they mean? Because it is possible and it happens that they mean different things for different subjects. So please spend time looking at 
What are they expecting you to do? Because that's what the verb is, right? That's what you're supposed to do. What are they expecting you to do in accordance with that particular verb? This is very important because this is where sometimes students really go wrong. They see a question, they see the verb, and then they go on and answer. And they think they're answering according to what, you know, their understanding. Meanwhile, they, miss, they either misread the verb or they misunderstood what that lecturer meant when they said critically evaluate. So spend time before the exam just understanding what do these verbs mean for your different subjects and what are the lecturers expecting you to do when they uh, request you to act according to these particular verbs. Number four, be exam fit. Right, now when I was writing my board exams, I think my first board exam was five hours over two days. I think five or four hours over two days. Now, if you sit down and you write for five hours, you are tired after that. You are just pushed after that. But you also have to prepare yourself. You can't just think you're gonna sit down and write for five hours and be able to do that. So one of the things that we did when we were preparing for these exams was to actually practice sitting down for a stretch of five hours, focus, concentrating, you know, on our work, writing an exam or a test or a mock, a mock exam. So get yourself exam fit. If your paper is two hours, okay, well, two hours is really sort of easy, but get yourself used to sitting down for two hours, concentrating and focused on that exam. Um, the next one, uh, number five, is review your past tests. So I never used to do this, and I really missed out an opportunity here because Reviewing your past test is an opportunity to, to reflect on yourself and see where you are going wrong. And you generally get to see what the problem is. And where you, you know, where you missed it, you can always, when you don't see what the problem is, you can always go back to your lecturer and check, you know. But going back to your past test and seeing what did I go wrong and why did I go wrong, you also start to realize a lot of the time it's not because of knowledge. Because a lot of the times when we fail, or when we don't perform well or you know the section that we get wrong let's say we got 70 percent and that 30 percent that we got wrong we assume it's because we don't know the work and that's not always the case sometimes you do know the work but maybe like i said with the verbs you didn't understand what was required of you or maybe in your answer you you know you didn't give sufficient information or whatever it is so look at your past tests and assignments and look at where you went wrong look at why you went wrong because that can help you um, it, to not make that mistake in the exam as well number six past papers oh past papers such a, a a difficult topic do you use past papers yes or no some institutions allow you to use past papers they give you access some don't my advice with past papers if your institution does give you access to past papers, please don't use them as a, 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 a mock or a, a guide of what your exam is going to look like. That's a very, very bad idea. I would use them, one, as a mock exam for yourself. So I, I what I like to do with past papers is I don't want to see that past paper until I'm ready to test myself and see how, how prepared I am for the exam. And then I'll sit down and write a mock exam using, say, for instance, last year's paper. And then I'll sit down, write under exam conditions. And that's also helping me to become exam fit. After writing, I'll put it away for a day. And then the next day, I'll come back and mark myself. And that already gives me an opportunity to see where I went wrong. Um, how can I improve on certain sections? Did I misunderstand the verb or whatever it is? And in that way, there's a lot happening there because I'm getting to get comfortable with the lecturer's language in terms of how they ask their questions and exams. I'm giving myself an opportunity to revise. And I'm also uh, reflecting and going over areas where I'm struggling with, where I might think it's a knowledge issue, but it's actually me misunderstanding what's required of me. So past papers, I would suggest you use it in that way. Do not use past papers as a bank of questions that you have to get through and if you get through five years past papers you are ready for the exam no no lecturer has uh, uh, an obligation 
to use past papers as a point of reference for setting an exam. So don't use past papers as a way of saying, okay, I've seen all the types of questions that can be asked. No, you haven't. That's just a recipe for disaster. But do use them as an opportunity for you to reflect and check how prepared are you for the upcoming exam. Number seven, consult, 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 consult. You know, school fees, varsity fees are not cheap. We pay a lot of money for university and you don't pay all that money so that you can get stuck in a textbook all by yourself without help. One of the reasons you pay all that money is because you have access to experts. I've mentioned this before in one of my videos. You have access to experts. Use them. So if you don't understand the verbs that they're using in the questions, go ask your lecturers what they mean. If you're not able to, having gone through all the work, you can't tell what's going on, you go to your lecturers and you ask them. If you are spending time, you've gone through your past papers and there's certain areas where you went wrong and you really don't know why you went wrong, you go to your lecturer and you go ask them, I can't see where I went wrong here, please assist me. If you're doing past papers and you mark yourself and you don't understand certain things, go ask your lecturers. Basically what I'm saying is use your lecturers. Don't go into your lecturer's office or, well, now I'm sure you're setting up Teams meetings. Don't set up a meeting with your lecturer and then say, I don't understand this topic. I mean, really, where's the lecturer supposed to start there? But when you go with specific problems, when you've spent time trying to articulate what's going on and you're struggling, you're able to ask specific questions when you get to the lecturer. And those consultation sessions are so invaluable. Trust me, any lecturer, when you walk in and you're engaging in the work and you have specific questions, that lecturer will be more than excited to assist you. So please, please, please consult, consult, consult. Don't wait though. Don't like have like a two hour consultation with your lecturer that can wear them out. Spread it out. As you go through a section, make an, an appointment with the lecturer once you're done and sit with them. So don't make it long consultation sessions because also that can wear you out and the lecturer, but spread it out throughout the semester. And then finally, this also sounds like common sense, but common sense is not always common rest make sure you get enough rest the night before the exam this i cannot emphasize this enough our bodies we are human you know we have limitations and you cannot perform at your optimum best if you have not gotten sufficient rest if you're not eating well if you're not looking after your body your body cannot do what you want it to do so please 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 make sure you get enough rest i remember i told you guys last week in second year i didn't perform so well and one of the test exams that i didn't do so well in is, is accounting my love accounting i remember the night before that exam i wasn't ready for that exam the way i wanted to be and I decided I'm going to spend the whole night studying. I was pumping up on caffeine. And you know what? When I, by the time I went to go write that exam, I was just seeing like <laughs> little black dots and stars on that paper. I didn't understand what was going on. So some of the most basic things that ordinarily I would know and I would understand, I was so tired that I just... I just wanted that exam to end. It was one of those long, long exams. I just felt like, is it not ending, you know? And one of the reasons was really, I was just tired. So you know yourself, you know the type of rest you need, whether it's six hours or four hours or eight hours, but get sufficient rest for you. Make sure that you're well rested the night before the exam. So that's it. Those are my eight points, eight tips that I think you should please consider when you are preparing for an exam we want to get you out of the system we want you to pass and get out of the university please take them into account when preparing for exams thank you so much for watching my video i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you next week bye